Hello, thank you for joining me again today. I'd like to talk today about tatting with color. Most people who hear the word tatting or tatted lace think of white and off-white tatting, traditionally put on handkerchiefs or used to make doilies. But tatting can also be made using colored thread and yarn. This is one reason why I have more yarn and thread than I will ever be able to use in several lifetimes. There are so many different beautiful threads and yarns out there that can be used. I wanted to show you today a very simple one ring pattern that you can use to make simple flowers. It is a good way to use up your thread on shuttles and to practice your skills. There's no need to use a crochet hook. You're not joining any picots. Okay. If you have a pattern that you've been working on and you now have your pattern completed, you have your ball thread, your shuttle thread, or just a shuttle, and you're finished, and you can Cut that off, and now you're left with a shuttle with a length of thread on it. Now a lot of times I will unwind this and either wind it back on the ball or put it into the ball to use at a later time. A lot of times, however, I just end up with a bolt full of tatting shuttles filled with lengths of color thread. This little pattern is a simple way to use those ends up. Okay, let's use this to begin with. There really is no pattern, so to speak. It's just one ring that you're making using the double knot and making long picots in between each knot. And there's no set number of picots. In nature, there's usually, usually, an odd number of petals, or so I've been told. So I tend to put an odd number, and it also depends on how much thread you have left. So you're just making your regular knots here with picots in between. So there are seven knots six picots so far, seven picots, eight picots, one more, nine. Okay. Once you have as many as you need or as much thread as you can, you close your ring. And you see right now, the ring is more of an oval shape. You can just push that into shape to make it more of a circle. And I usually cut off the end to match here. And there's your, there's your ring. And that's your flower depending on what you're going to use it for. You can either leave the ends on to sew it onto an embroidery project and then stitch over that as a stem or you can just use them as simple flowers with the Pico's left hole which 
to do that. For this flower, what I usually do is turn it over, pull the ends the other way towards the middle to hide those. So you're not tying a knot, you're just cutting those off because you're probably just going to stitch this down so it doesn't matter. There's not going to be any tension on that so it's not going to come undone. And there's your flower. Now the next step that you could do to make it look even totally different is cut the picos. And you have a totally different flower. I made this brooch out of some very nice cotton Karen watercolors thread. Very pretty multicolored flower. And very simple. It's just one ring, but the variegation makes it look totally different for each ring. I hope this gave you some ideas of what you can do. As a beginner, you're going to end up with probably some shuttles with ends on them. This is a very simple little flower that you can use to practice and have fun. Thank you for watching.